Hey guys, I'm Heidi with Lilac and Vine Orchards and starting off here as first year flower farmers, I thought it would be kind of fun. We've shared our story and what we're doing, how we're starting off with no budget, no backing, what all we're doing. Um, but I thought today would be fun to kind of show you guys our property here in Western North Carolina and kind of do a, a dream with me. What we picture, what we see, what we're praying over and the ideas we have that could, Lord willing, one day be Lilac and Vine Orchards. So come with me. I'm going to share it all with you today. today we've been so excited to get to start sharing all about this idea of turning all of the screen behind us into fields of flowers now coming from the wedding industry myself as a florist and a wedding planner when we first moved to this property years ago the first thing we said was oh my gosh we could grow flowers you could host here you could do so many amazing things and life happens <laughs> all of the stuff you guys you can see it all on our family channel heavenly minded home but life's been going on for nearly a decade and now here we are in a new season of life where i think it's time to start making some of these things become a reality so while our list is very long and we are very far from it because if you saw our video we'll link it right up here sharing about what we're doing and how we're starting off a flower farm and all of that great stuff you'll know that we just rent we don't own this property as of today um we hope we can it's definitely a prayer in the kind of bigger picture ideas that we've had for years but we don't own this property we don't really have a budget that we're starting with with any of this we are in ministry full time we serve and we trust that the lord will lead and provide if it's what we're supposed to be doing and so we trust in that and we have the most you know we have absolute peace in all of it but it still is kind of fun to think about the things that we've always said we would love to be able to do but also to share the realistic challenges that we're facing in making these things a reality and so i think there are some amazing channels out there that are so wonderful with what they share but unfortunately i think a lot of people start sharing they kind of wait to share until they've actually kind of figured out some of the pieces and put some of it together, right? And, and I get it, it makes sense. But we wanted to go a little bit different here and share from the very beginning, what are our ideas for this property here, right? Like, are we gonna end up making any money? Is this gonna be something that we can do? What are those challenges and obstacles that we're going to run into? I think there's something really neat and really beautiful about seeing the whole process so before it's beautiful before it's fixed before it's something that's like working and going I want to share that with you guys here so be sure to subscribe turn on your little bell notifications for this journey as we go through it but let me go ahead turn this camera around and kind of share with you that dream right like dream with me what our thoughts have always been what we're praying over and what this property might one day be so this here is our property. We have just under eight acres in Western North Carolina. And we have this kind of like bottom field here, which is lined by a creek that runs down here and around, a creek that keeps 
coming up in storms and literally eating our driveway away. So that's a whole disaster. But we have this big long field here that goes down to the road. And then we've kind of got some forested area right there. The hill that we are letting grow back in, there's our house there. We love this hill because it is covered in blackberries. And not only do I love blackberry vines, but we love having fresh fruit all summer long. We have one large field down here that goes along the creek that I'll show you. We have this poor old falling apart barn. We have an additional field back over here. We have a big open field right here. We have our house, our yard, all of our personal space there. And then we have another field up above that with an amazing tree grove back over there. So that's kind of just an overview of our property here. We are in zone 7B. We get I love it because we get all four seasons very distinctively, but also pretty mild. So we get winter, but it's not so bad. We get summer, but it's also not so bad. And we also get really great amounts of rain. So we're kind of in a sweet spot where, yeah, sometimes we'll get some crazy storms. Sometimes we'll get some crazy stuff. I love that we hardly have many cars going up and down our road. And today when I choose to do this, it's like been nonstop. But we get a pretty happy medium. We get a lot of sunshine, we get good amounts of water, and really our only space that we have that we have flooding would be this field here. So until about that point there, this field floods quite often. So let me, let me tell you our ideas. And as a wedding florist, I love how much was already growing on this property because I could forage and pull so many beautiful flowers and foliage to use in designs. Here's the dream vision. The driveway would move over there. So instead of our driveway going along the creek back here, see it's just this sweet little creek that we love. The kids like to come out and play in it. It's nice to have fresh water. We have lots of springs and stuff that feed all around here. That part's great. Unfortunately, the road's right there. And with really heavy rain or big storms, it backs up, it fills up, and then turns this into a lake. And as you can see, our driveway is over the years completely and utterly eroding away. We even have some wood boards in there trying to make it so when it rains, we're not getting stuck in the mud. And as you can see here, look at this. This is no good and it's, oh look at it, now there's a bucket that's washed up. But you can see here, this is where our driveway ends, is right there. And so in the past eight years, that's what we've lost. Our driveway used to be over here. Now we've got a tree growing in it, but our driveway used to sit over here. And every time after rain, more falls down in there, less exists over here. So kind of a pretty soon thing that's gonna need to happen. We would wanna make the driveway come in from that side, run down along the bottom of the hill, come up here and connect. So that would have to happen. That also means that we could do some really fun landscaping and space down here. Couple thoughts. One would be to fill this field here with wildflower mix. Lots of wildflowers, maybe even do like a you pick setting. Even at the worst it's ever been, we, we kind of have this, this limit, this level of where it hits to. So if it was over there, the driveway would always be safe. It would be okay. It wouldn't constantly be eroding down into the creek. If we did a big wildflower field here, I feel like as you drove by, it would really stand out. You could really see it. And at the same time, if we lost it or, you know, a bad storm came through or something like that, our money wouldn't be focused on this crop here. I feel like this front field here is great. You know, the kids come and play in it. We walk out here every day. We do things like that. But 
having it something that more so is just noticeable stuff that you would see on the road, something that could be a little bit prettier to welcome guests and things like that would be the focus here. I wouldn't want to put anything in this field that we were like depending upon. My other dream idea would be to fence in a large portion of this and maybe do some great landscaping and stuff around the fencing and then get a bunch of goats and things like that. Maybe a donkey, maybe, you know, maybe some fun things um, that are more like petting zoo <laughs> type, uh, type animals in here with just some plants outside around it and a little barn building kind of back up over here for when it's stormy. Um, that would be like a dream idea if I could ever get my husband to go for it, but I think wildflowers are probably my safer bet, just a huge field here that we could spread out lots and lots of wildflowers and really get a great space that, depending upon the weather, we could open up for some you pick bouquets and things like that would be fun. So ideally the new driveway would come around here and connect and this kind of leads us to our main space in this kind of dream with me thought process we're having here. So here is, an old barn building. It's kind of been falling apart since we moved here. Um, the good thing is though, it has a great foundation. It already has power and it has its own well. So those are three great points that we have here. And then we have this very large field here that runs all the way back. The church owns property behind us. That's all forested. We have a row of massive overgrowth coming out here. Um, there's apple trees actually under that overgrowth if we could get back to it. And then we have a field of pine trees behind that. So this is all kind of our lower field area. Along the trees here, this is the creek line that runs down that we would love even more to kind of clean up so you could get down, see the creek a little bit better. Um, let's talk about our ideas for this space because I feel like this is kind of the big one. This space back here is so beautiful and it's pretty much always been our favorite because there's so many possibilities. Even at the worst hurricanes, the worst weather we've ever had come in, we know where the water can come up to. We know where like our safe zone is, but we have a very large space back here that we could put in some amazing crops. So I think part of the flower farm vision is not only fresh blooms to pick and share and sell, but that space, making a space that is lovely, that is beautiful, that is perfect for hosting. We host our church family here on the property once a year and just different times throughout the year having people come over. We're planning our son's graduation party. We've hosted a wedding for friends, right? We've done these different things. And every time we do, we always go, man, it's so pretty when you come out here, right? Like it's a great space. Sure, everything has its downsides, but it's still a great space. And so my vision, my dream here, right? Like the big thought that we're praying over would be taking this poor, sad, falling apart barn down, ideally replacing it with like a, a steel building with a metal siding, just so it'd be a little bit, you know, not dealing with wood rot and things like that, doing some amazing landscape around it, but landscape that could also be used in floral design. So I'm thinking like big, beautiful climbing roses, like climbing garden roses, peony bushes, you know, stock, larkspur, you know, things like that, that we could get in here and make amazing bouquets out of. Some great windows, porch settings inside of the barn then could become not only our design prep and workspace but could also be beautiful and lovely and able to host events and parties and gatherings so I'm a big chandelier person. We used to do chandeliers for events all the time. So I'm like, I want a floral studio that we can work and do all of our stuff. But you know, I want a massive chandelier in there. I want beautiful lights. I want a great space that could host Mother's Day. You know, think of like a Mother's Day gatherings where like we could have tea party, maybe even champagne and bouquet making, or even just an event space. If you wanted to host baby showers or birthday parties or bridal luncheons or things like that. So I think there are so many different things that we could do here. You know, we've always talked maybe even going into weddings and getting back into all of that, but taking this poor barn, 
bringing it back to life, <laughs> making it beautiful, lovely, and safe, and getting the, you know, well up and going, making sure the electricity, you know, kind of checking all of those boxes, adding in a bathroom down here. Um, that would be huge for this barn, but I think we could make it so beautiful again with some great flowers growing up on it. We know stuff likes growing down here. We just need the right things growing. And then again, you would look out and see the creek line right here, kind of cleaning that up a little bit, scaling it back, adding some park benches around the property so you could walk around and sit and enjoy. I think that would just be gorgeous. It would be so much fun. And then some like outdoor patio space out here, I think would be really, really great. So then that leads us to this massive space back here that really we could do so much with this. What I really envision is obviously the back here where we're standing is the barn, right? That I would love to fix up as a flower <laughs> barn, how beautiful that would be. And then if we could have huge garden beds out here, especially the types of stuff that you would want for bouquets, um, for wedding florists, for more upscale events, especially us, we're close to the Biltmore House and we've done many beautiful events up there, but having huge fields out here of amazing cut garden beds, even hosting brides and bridesmaids if they wanted to come out, you know, a couple days, few days before the wedding and pick flowers and make bouquets. We could have a whole event where it becomes an experience, right? You come out with your girls, you know, we have the barn all set up, everything's beautiful. We can host kind of like a luncheon or a tea party type thing. And then you come out and you pick your bouquets. Like how fun would that be? We could offer some help and assistance, right? As you get everything put together. But I think having a space for this don't mind the old pool we drug out um, having a space for this where you could come out and enjoy or even just on a weekend right if you wanted to come out with your family and pick flowers and picnic and and do something if you wanted to host something in the newly redone barn right that would always be the big dream um, having a little farm shop in there right having a space for all of that I think we definitely have the space now it's just the working hard to earn the ability to start making these things happen. These types of ideas are those things that we've always talked about. I think our area would love it. I think it would do well. And now it's just, you know, figuring out how to come together and make it happen. And that's what the Lord wants. It'll happen. I trust that. But that would always be the big vision. We've also thought about doing some glamping sites. Now, unfortunately, we are close to the interstate. So... The other unfortunate would be is we have one neighbor right behind us who has cut down like all the trees, which for the life of me, I don't understand. It means he now just looks at the interstate. I don't get it, but it means it has gotten noisier. We do hear more stuff over here because he cut down all the trees, which is an unfortunate. Um, it is also why this backfield, so we have a whole row of apple trees if we can get under the stuff that's growing over them. Behind them, we have a whole nother field nearly as big as this. We are letting pine trees grow back in back there because he cut down all the trees on his property. We'd like to add a little more back in there and give us a little bit of a buffer. So that is growing, that is happening there. It has kind of worried me because I feel like sometimes you don't really hear the interstate as much, especially if you've got music going and people running around and noises happening, you really don't notice it. But if it's really quiet, you notice it and it's there. So we've kind of gone back and forth. Would we do some like glamping sites, um, kind of tucked back in the flower fields or something? Um, we do camp outs with our church family and we always have a really great time. And so that's what kind of keeps leading us to, you know, maybe having a couple spots kind of tucked back here or maybe kind of working over in the trees, a couple little, you know, secret camping spots or something. I don't know. We've kind of gone back and forth on that. Not too sure, but I think especially being able to redo the barn, have it be a workspace, a shop space, but also an event space would be totally doable, especially with utilities already down here. We would just need to put in a septic. Um, so I think that would be great. And then this gives us a massive field that gets amazing light and wonderful drainage. That would give us all of this, except for our fire pit. We did s'mores last night and burnt a bunch of 
trees we had cut down, but that would give us all of the space down here for some amazing flower fields. And I think this could be huge. And I just think it would be so beautiful to be able to pull up, come down here, right? You're seeing there's wildflowers all over there. You see just rows and rows of flowers here, a beautiful barn with a beautiful patio, right? All of the things and to be able to come in, enjoy, host your event, pick your flowers, maybe sit by the creek, have a picnic, um, do photo shoots. There's so many different things that we could do if that were the case. Here buried underneath all this overgrowth were apple trees that the deer love to eat. We have a big project to get down here and try to tackle and clean up all of this area. So that's a lot that we've got to work on a little bit of time. I don't have my boots on, so I'm not going to walk back here, but those are all the pine trees and really that space, it's, you know, that wide all the way back to over here is our property still. So it's a little under half um, the site, you know, if, if it, this would have kind of come out straight right here, it's about that big back over here that I still think there's things that we could do, but I wouldn't want to clear all that out to do flower fields necessarily because we like having the trees grow in there. But even then, like this space right here, that's kind of overgrown right now, this is a great space that we could do, um, something, you know, if we did maybe some type of berry bushes or something like that in here that we could add into it. There is no shortage of space, that's for sure. So then this leads us to more of our upper fields. Now, our house is up here, so we would like to ideally keep the public space where people could come, you know, go to the venue space, go to the barn, go to the shop, flower fields you'd be walking through. We would keep those down here so that way you don't necessarily have people like traipsing through your house <laughs> and your yard as you're doing stuff. And so ideally we would use this space here, you know, maybe do some gravel or something and have a parking space. Um, this field you can see from the tire tracks there usually drains the fastest. It does it the best um, as far as being something that you can drive on, but adding in some gravel, partnering with the church next door to use their parking lot and bringing stuff in. I, I think we definitely could facilitate that here in this space. And then that leaves us all of this behind me still that would be open for more flower growth. So we've got some cleaning up in the trees that we need to do, but then we have all of this. That right there is our well. But we have all of this. This would be our home and our personal space. And then this field goes all the way up over here and back into these trees. All of this would be open for flower production. Right now, as we have it planned from about that dot right there, all the way back to here. First year flower farming, the goal is for all of this to be sunflowers. Succession planning but it's gonna be a lot of sunflowers. I think that's going to be a huge key in us figuring out realistically how much we can sell, right? We know we have the space, we know we've got that, we gotta get a little bit of manpower, but even with succession planting, even with doing all of that, I think having the barn to be able to process and prep and do stuff, that's gonna be huge. Right now, that's probably gonna look like us cleaning it out and we're just gonna have to deal with it all shabby, chic as it is because that's what we have and, and that's okay. But if this were all sunflowers, if this were more of those, you know, kind of big crops, real statement crops, I think for events, it's still amazing because you can use them for photo shoots. You get this amazing view as you come up the driveway of not only rows of flowers all back over here, but then this huge crop of sunflowers behind you. I think it really sets it up and it also will kind of block in our personal family space up there, right? We can put a cute sign in the driveway that says, hey, you know, you're good, you've come far enough. Um, but that kind of blocks in all of our personal space right up there. And so um, having this as a sunflower field, I think it'll work out quite well. And I'm really excited to try it this year and learn from it, right? See what maybe we need to adjust or what we need to do. We've grown some flowers out here before. They grow great, they love it. Um, and so hopefully this field back up here can become the sunflower field because they are just always top earners, easy to grow in our area and just huge statement flowers. So I think even 
thinking of this as a venue site and hosting other events and doing things like that, kind of having the bridge of flower farm and event space, even if it's our own events that we're doing, um, I think that makes a nice setup. And even with this bottom field we had talked about, you know, towards the end of the season, when you know all the flowers that we're gonna have there, kind of, you know, they've had their time, we could do a sunflower maze down here. We have a lot of space for it, a lot of fun kind of fall activities we can get into with doing potted moms and a pumpkin patch um, to sell heirloom pumpkins. Um, I always love finding those fun, funky pumpkins for just fall decorating. Our family doesn't celebrate Halloween, but having the, the heirloom stuff, the fun stuff, the funky stuff for just fall decorating, I think is really fun. And so, being able to grow some of those specialty items and things like that, I think would be really fun for just the fall season, right? Thinking of the different things for each season that are beautiful and special and just such a blessing from that season and really capturing that. Um, I think that's a really great way and flowers are huge in that of being able to say, what does the season offer us? that's beautiful, right? Like, let's enjoy that. Let's take that in and share it with others. And so heirloom pumpkins and squashes and things and some potted bombs and a sunflower maze, like all of that stuff is just super fun. So anyways, those are the kind of thoughts for there. And then sunflower field back up here. Let's talk about this upper field. Now we're at the top of our field, which even goes back there into the trees. It's beautiful. We have all of this space up here. And personally, I just love this view. I cannot wait to see this view with fields of flowers and all of the green. How amazing will that be? So my idea for up here is much more the retail sales or even wholesale, the things that we're going to be clipping, cutting, selling, preparing, even event work that we might be doing and stuff like that. We have a great space up here that we could grow stuff that maybe isn't like a you pick setting where people are going to be coming through, but these are our beds. I would love to plan out beds based for weddings and events off of different color palettes and things like that, that we could put together bouquets and centerpieces. And again, having that barn space down there to design it all in would be super helpful. Now this year, right back here, so far we're starting with prepping four beds. You guys can go and watch our video and see what we're doing, what our plans for starting off here are, at least getting stuff in the ground here soon, because that really needs to happen. But this would give us this whole field back here that we could plant a lot of garden beds. We do have some trees. We do have some shade areas. I actually really like that because I would love to grow more a still bee. We would love to grab more or grow more lily of the valley. I would love to grow many of those things that need a little more shade. And so having spaces here along the trees that do receive more shade, we could clear out some of that and do some different things. I love that that would give us that flexibility to have more of those shaded areas as well. It's great to have good sun. You need that for so much stuff. And we have a lot of that here, so I'm very thankful. But we also could really use some shaded areas and up here totally provides that. So ideally, Lord willing, this would be a huge hill because <laughs> we do got a little bit of an incline to work with, but a huge hill of amazing garden beds for fresh flowers and um, things that we would really use for our design. So we've got flower beds started there. I've also gone ahead and planted a few things like we've got some lilacs, of course, going in the ground, some hydrangea, a few viburnum. Um, so we've got a few things going around that, you know, kind of hoping for the future and putting stuff in that will take a little while, but one day will be something beautiful and full of beautiful blooms. The other idea that we're kind of starting now as a hopefully investment into the future is we're going to fill this hill with lavender. Um, having lavender bushes, I think would be wonderful. There's so many uses, of course, for lavender. And so we would like to start investing a little bit. Um, I think sunflowers are the easier, more predictable. Maybe we can make something with this crop to focus on, but at least starting some lavender bushes um, in a good space with well-drained soil, lots of great sun, I think is gonna be really important. So we are getting ready to start that. 
like I said, a few things in the works, but just starting off, these are kind of those things we're dreaming over. Again, most of this has been stuff that we have been thinking about since we moved here, like nine years ago. And so we understand that we're facing a lot of challenges, right? How do you start flower farming, especially with like no budget and doing this all from scratch? How do we find a way to hopefully Lord willing purchase this property so it's actually ours? How do we market ourselves, market our flowers so we can get stuff up there, we can get some revenue coming in to go towards building a barn that can host events, planting bigger crops next year and doing all of these different projects, let alone still being in ministry full time, homeschooling our four children and just, you know, life in general, right? Everything that comes with that. So there's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of things, but it's something we love. And it's something, honestly, we've always loved and we've always just kind of had some peace in. And so seeing all of this, talking about it as a family, praying over it and going, you know what? let's just go for it. Let's just do it. And if the Lord wants us here, he'll bless it and he'll grow it. And I totally trust him in all of that, but we can share along the way, right? Like sometimes it's nice to have somebody come along and show you the raw, real truthful, like this is where we're at. It's great when things get built up and they become something amazing and then they grow from there. That's wonderful. But what about for those of us who don't have a big savings to go off of to invest in the equipment and invest in the product and start turning it into something, right? What about those of us who are scratching the ground and trying to figure out how to be resourceful and creative and use what the land gives us to turn it into something? That's where we're at in our homestead, flower farm, you know, possible event venue space one day journey. That's where we're at along with our kiddos and we got my brother helping out and my husband, you know, so that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. That is my like dream with me, big vision of if we could turn this into something, this is kind of that vision that honestly we've always had that we would love to be able to make happen. Now, follow along with us. Who knows what comes of this, but God's got it. We trust him and we're going to keep working each and every day towards those things that we feel that they're important and they deserve our time and attention, especially being able to do it together as a family. So thanks for hanging out with me and going on this big tour of everything. I'm going to go inside and get something cold to drink. You guys be sure that you tap that subscribe button. If you want to give us a thumbs up, leave us comments, chat with us as we go. We would appreciate you. If you want a little something else to watch, check this out here as you learn more about our lilac and vine orchards. Bye guys.